And welcome back to Pastor Plex Podcast. I am your host, Pastor Plex. Welcome back, everybody. We're recording live here from Austin, Texas. And with me in studio is none other than Katie Sass. And she is um, very proficient in momming, which is really great. And then also in uh, studio with me is Nicole Super Trooper Troop. Ladies, welcome to the show. Thanks. Happy to be here. Katie's Katie, distracted. Katie. Fly. <laughs> All right, so the question we're going to be wrestling with today is, or maybe it's more of a comment that will just kind of get us going. I'm a low-energy, stone-faced worshiper until I hear a classic hymn. There are just certain songs that just burst forth from me and certain songs where I just get stuck in my head about how I don't like the song or don't like the band that wrote the song or how contemporary music is inferior, etc. I actually found that watching church from home for two years really messed up my ability to praise God in songs that I don't like because I was never singing at home. Thoughts? <laughs> Did you ever, was there a season when you were worshiping at home and not singing and that messed you up? No. Did you, you sing at home? I mean, I always sing at home, but, but Did like. Did you sing along in worship songs? Like if I watch online? Yeah. Nah, it's kind of weird. Like, like when I'm, if I, if I'm home, like, I don't know. Are you not a sing, like when you're, when you're driving in the car, do you sing along? Oh yeah. So why not at home? I, I don't know. It's, I think it's something about it being on TV and I'm watching it. And like, I've tried to sing along, but then it's just like me in my house. It's not the like... So why is the car, it's you in your car. It's not the like corporate worship experience. Do you feel corporate worship in traffic or something? Like, what's no, the difference? No, I like... Me There's and my like car a safety in your is car. Like, me and my car is like jamming out. Like, I, if I'm singing in my car, I'm singing because I want to sing. So and when you go to church, are you singing because you don't want to sing? No. It's different. If there's like an act, like, How's I don't it know different? how to describe no, it. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm just trying to get to the, the <laughs> let's get to the root of your problem over here. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just, the, the couple of times that I have tried to worship along with the like live stream. Yeah. It just like something about it feels off. You can probably just hear yourself more. I mean, I don't mind hearing myself. Like, I hear myself in my car. Oh. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I like it so loud I can't hear myself. I, yeah. That's well, well loud. we know. <laughs> 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 what does that mean? You sing very loud. I do. You do. Um, and sometimes off key, but that's besides the point. Um, but it's, yeah, I don't know what it is. If about, you're wondering where Katie is because you can't see her head anymore, it's because she's laying on the, on the table. I think I need a snack. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Katie, talk to me about your worship experiences. Because really, this is the first church that you've been a part of. Like, that I've like, by choice, yeah. yeah. So, but, but you were talking earlier about, or was it you? Katie, you know. Oh, about the well, so I grew, up, I grew up in a Baptist like I grew up periodically, every once in a while, we would go to a First Baptist Church in a small town. And so, you know, it was like, there was no, it was a piano. Um, and then there was a choir and um, we sang. Like it was, we just sang songs. There was no band or anything like that. Okay, so. But then, are yeah. you about to ask me what I'm, I think I'm about to tell the story yep, yep, of what you're. So, uh before I became a Christian, uh, there was this guy that I dated, and he, well, he didn't really date. I don't know. We, like, made out sometimes. But the, he he brought me to the church that he was going to, and I think he was, like, a new believer, but I didn't yeah. know this. Like, I didn't know that he was, like, so the first time he brought me to church, he got baptized. <laughs> wow. Like, and I, deal. and I mean, I'm like 20 years old and hadn't, I hadn't been in a church. Hold on, this is after we knew you then. This is after you knew me, but I wasn't, like, I wasn't coming all the time right. to Wells Branch. Right. I would come if I felt like it. Yeah. So this was after my long, my boyfriend of like a year and a half had dumped me. And this new guy was a guy that lived in my apartment complex that like, I thought was, he was kind of cute and he liked me. And so we would make out every once in a while. But like, so he took me to church on Sunday and he, 
Um, then all of a sudden we're standing there. First off, I feel so awkward in this place because it's this Where, where small, was the church? Do you remember? It was in, it's in like downtown Austin, but like south of, I, I don't remember. It, I lived, south of we, what? We lived like east, southeast Austin. So oh, somewhere down there. Interesting. I would love to. I wish I knew what church that was. Um, it was small. It was a small. Like I walk in and I was not dressed well. Like all the girls were had on these like really modest outfits and these really like just longer skirts than I was wearing. And so I like sit in the pew. Like there were pews, you know, the wooden pew and the velvet seats. Yeah. And I'm sitting down and my, I keep having to pull my skirt down yeah. because I'm like, this is, I feel really uncomfortable. Like I, I was just like, shoot, this is, I look like a little. Hussy. I look like a <laughs> prostitute or something in this place. Like this is not good. And, and so he gets up and he's like, hey, I'll be right back. And then he didn't he even tell you. No, you he he did ah. not even say like I'm getting baptized today. Like I I walk in or he walks up to the, on the stage, and then he gets baptized. And I was like, oh cool. So it was this big celebration. I felt really awkward because um, I mean I bring this story up because the the worship was hymns. Yeah, like I had to like hold a hymn book and. And like awkwardly sing, there was no music, there was no instrument, like nothing. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't know, maybe it was a Church of Christ, who knows? I didn't know the difference back in the day, and so, um, but yeah. Anyways, we we <laughs> broke up later, or we just stopped seeing he, each other. Well, he yeah, he he got a little too. He told me he like fell in love with me, and it was just weird, and so yeah. The hymnal thing always threw me off. Why? Um, it feels very like insidery. Because you have to know where the page numbers are. Yeah, and the, like they're, Did you just say they're just like foreign. Like if like you're an insider language, if like you're not someone who grew up with that. Like you like come into the you come into a church that uses a hymnal mm -hmm. and like oh, is that what they're called? They're not hymn books. Hymnal, yeah. Hymnals. Yeah. Oh. Hymn books is probably also an appropriate way. I think you could get away with hymn books, but that would make you look like a weirdo. Hymnal is like the official. The book of hymns. Book, book of I hymns. I know the word hymnal because I've heard so many people yeah, say hymnal. hymnal. It's a and, hymnal. Yeah. And like, it, it's but not like, a hernal, yeah, that's feels, for sure. It feels like, it feels like insider, like Christianese <laughs> songs. Whereas like the contemporary songs that we sing, I, I mean like, they're all like theologically sound, mm -hmm. um, but they're also like, they're contemporary, so they sound a little bit more like like pop music. Mm -hmm. And so it's less foreign to you, even if you don't know the words. Sure. I think I think what the person is getting at, there's a lot of songs that we sing that come from bands that are that are not theologically sound. But the songs and lyrics are fine. Yeah. And I honestly that's where I, I don't get legalistic about it because I'm just it's words and most people don't go look them up. And the only people who do are people that really care about that. And, right. and so- Well, and I, the, like I, when yeah. you're worshiping, when you're singing worship songs, like your heart should be focused right. on, on God. Like your heart should but be directed can, toward God. I think to the point, what can happen is if you're singing like a Bethel song and you start thinking about how awful Bethel's theology is and you just want to go- How do people know it's a Bethel song? Like, I don't understand that. Because the- because people, how do they know? So here's how. So someone hears a song. Oh, I wonder who wrote this song. They look it up. Uh huh. Are they theologically sound? Uh huh. That, that's kind of how usually that goes. Like in the middle of church. Oh yeah. Oh, I've never once. So and there's just that's why it's different. Interesting. Different people do different things. I yeah. have I ever done that? Heck no. But I I do know that people get really upset about it because it's a thing. I mean, there, yeah. there is awful theology out there. But man, sometimes those people with awful theology have some solid theo theological songs that are on. Mm -hmm. They're on fire. They they nail it. And so that's where you go. Are, are we going to worry about who wrote every song? Um, would I personally want to write our own worship songs? Yeah, that's why Cody. We're wor we're working our own songs, right, Cody? He said yes. <laughs> so one day I would love to have, a, have us write our own songs and then uh, it would be like, you know, the Wells Branch Church songs. And I would love that. Yeah. That, would, that would make me really, really happy. And then our, we, now, do you lose something because not every song's on the radio? Maybe, or, but who listens to radio anyway? So yeah, I, I think that it becomes a really cool experience when you get to write your own music. Um, so I would love for that to be a part of where we're at. Um, and I think that would 
because then people here would be like, oh, I know they wrote that song. And then they feel an affinity and affection for it because the person singing it actually wrote that song and they don't have to worry about the theology of the people who wrote it. Yeah. That's why probably Charles Wesley, you know, he wrote most hymns. Yeah. Uh, who was John Wesley's brother. Fun fact. Nobody cares. All right. So, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that kind of, it, which is sort of weird when you think about John Wesley, his theology wasn't, I mean, it wasn't bad. It was just different than most of the church. Yeah. So, interesting. I do like when we sing hymns here, even though I think, I think it's the act of opening up a hymnal. Really? It's just the sheer act of opening a hymnal? It feels like it's like the difference between reading the King James Version Bible and like the like the ESV message. or NLT Bible. Yeah. I do remember. Okay, so going like back. It's a little more approachable. Yeah, I, I t- listen, I'm not, a, I'm not. Um, I just don't have fun. What, singing it? hymns. Yeah, you, you, what, you don't have fun? I just don't, I'm like kind of like, if we don't have to do it this way, then why would we do it this way? Right, and, and I think it goes back to some people who love the hymns because it takes them back to the nostalgic moments when God was really real and they were seven years old and they got to experience that being close to their parents and like there was something really special about that, which is why I think there's sometimes for us to have corporate worship together. I think so a concert of prayer, we'll have everyone in here together kind of experiencing worship together. Mm-hmm. And although that might be distracting, it, it might create a memory for your child that where they look up and see mom and dad singing and it's a powerful mm-hmm. memory that mm-hmm. kind of creates this like oh wow that meant something to me yeah whereas I think for maybe and maybe you know in a couple of years we'll move on to it like I don't know like digital music or something where there is no stringed instruments or drums and it's completely like someone up here with like a I hope that never and then happens. they're worshiping <laughs> and like everyone's like <sighs> And then, the then all of a sudden, someone gets up there and they play like a Tomlin song from like 2004, and like just weeping. Like and everyone's like, "Oh my gosh, yeah. Tomlin 2004? Who sings that?" And so that that's kind of how that's the experience that I think people are having is that they really resonate with what m- didn't even have to move them when they were younger. It just was a thing when they were younger. If that makes sense. Hmm. There you go. Two yeah. cents. All right. Have you? Okay, I've been seeing. Um, reels and stuff on Instagram that are basically just like old TikToks of people kind of making fun of like Gen Z a little bit. Mm -hmm. And like, it's like point of view, like, you go to a church that has a Gen Z worship leader or something, and it's like oh, all the, like the, worship songs and the like Gen Z like yeah, slang terms. Yeah, I saw and it. Stuff. The clap back and the, yeah. yeah, I saw it. And like, oh, because Satan's so sus, you know, all that. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. I thought that was funny. It was funny. I, I don't want to give him too there. much credit because I just go, uh huh, and then I move <laughs> on. Because I was like, I mean, it, it, I, I saw their attempt. It, I appreciate the attempt. I just didn't think they landed it. Ah. Yeah, they needed a little more umph. So, how would you land it, Chris? Uh, I would have got an actual band. I would have had some like real singing. He, the guy, just is like one dude singing by himself, kind of trying to act it out a little bit. Uh. I hate the act outs. Like, if you're going to act it out, let's go full on act you out. You would do like an ensemble. Yeah. Like, like this it, is a large production. Yeah. And so it was, it was like one dude, it, great. It was a POV and he was trying to express something, but I just feel like it lacked a landing. Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, all he did was throw in all Gen Z words like clap back and sus. And we were expected to just think that was roaringly funny. And since TikTok automatically makes you watch it over again, that's why I got so many bazillion views. <laughs> anyway. There's my, my anyway. critique of TikTok and how their views are inflated. Yeah. I don't have TikTok. Yeah, that's smart. I have Instagram, which is just TikTok, but like two weeks later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, on, I'm taking the summer off of social media. Wow. So I haven't seen. Hey, that's great. Why? Just because. How's that? I mean, like you're just, God came to you in the dead of night, so you off TikTok? Um, so because of work, I've always, uh, I've never been able to like take that long off. Like I would like take a week. That's the longest time I've ever been able to like take a break from social media because I have to like get back on and be engaged with work and da, da, da. Well, now that I am going to have a different job in the fall, I don't have to, you know, be super engaged. And so I just, I deleted the apps like the beginning of May, like May 2nd or something. And I was like, well, I'll just like get back on whenever I feel like getting back hey, if on. If you want, I can screw up the algorithm algorithms for you and find all the stuff that like I like or like make sure that you don't like. And then when you get on social media, you don't care about it. 
<laughs> it's pretty great. Like I, I intentionally, I've, I've shared this before. I've intentionally I messed up all my, like I liked <laughs> random people that I'm friends with, but I don't really know. Chris so is... if I like anything on your thing, it's because I don't really know you. Anyway, uh, and so that that kind of just shifted my whole, like I don't, there's nothing interesting on Facebook anymore. It's beautiful. Oh. I just wanted to read more. That's a good like read like read your like Bible it just more became or read... such a distraction where like if I if there was a lull so like in the are you day, talking about actual book with pages yeah you read well I'm tr- like I am about to finish my second book over the last couple months wow hey, what are, what are you great. reading um, well the first one was a parenting book it was an angry mom book mm. and yes. so I read that finished it and then now I'm on my on another mom book and I'm about to finish it it's wow like, what's this one awesome. it's called M is for Mama. Uh-huh. And it's called A Rebellion Against Mediocre Motherhood. Wow. Really Are you good. stepping up your game? The mom, yeah, I'm trying to. The mom has like 10 kids and she's like, she's just pretty awesome. So, did you, and you know that 10 kids is way easier than one kid, right? Sure. The, yeah. I, I mean, don't know. remember 10 kids. We're not going to talk you, about how many kids we're going to have. I'm just throwing not, that out there. Yeah. So, but just anyways, don't, I just don't want you to feel like you're inferior with your one because it's way harder to do one than 10. Oh, I mean, I don't. I, that's not what I'm worried about. I just, well, so like I was like, I'll just, I didn't really have like an amount of time. And then I was telling Ryan about it and he goes, you should do a hundred days. hundred days of social and media fast. And I was like, a hundred days? He was like, yeah. You think you could do it? And I was like, sure. Okay, whatever. And So when was the last time you were on it? May, May 2nd, probably. So... It's been like three weeks, I guess. So June 2nd, July 2nd. So August 12th August will be 12th. when I get back on. Nice. That's so I'm excited, yeah. Yeah. Are you still doing social media posts for the church then or no? No, No, I sadly <laughs> told Nicole. I was like, hey. You just like jumped. You said, hey, I'm going to do this thing. And then you. Yeah, I know. I felt really bad about it. You but I, I did. No, I felt. It's okay. I, well, I, I was. I'll, I'll advocate on your behalf. I. <laughs> it's well, fine. it just kind of hit me of like, you know, I want this distraction out of my life for a mm-hmm, period mm-hmm. and just kind of see what, what it would bring. Like what fruit is this going to bear? I can't believe you know, you're reading like, actual books. That's like amazing. I'm excited. Me too. Ryan is like, who even are you? Yeah, I, I'm like that. I think I that's great. Also, I love the like intentionality that you take with being a mom. Aww, like you. you're just so humble about the fact that you Need are to be better. just <laughs> trying to trying to do your best for Ava's sake. Yeah, and I think she'll be a same kid when she grows up. I hope. Yeah, I, hope. I think that's yeah. going to have a really big... She pulled my hair yesterday and I had to not well, suck a puncher. Well, you know, so. she's <laughs> also still Ava, so... Yeah. <laughs> she's also your daughter. Yeah. She's a feisty one. Yeah. So I don't know where she gets it. Yeah. But she always does like so well in like toddler class on Sundays. And stuff, yeah. When so. she wants to be just the sweetest angel, I mean, it's just like, wow. It is kind of like you. That is how you are. And then, but then <laughs> when she's... When you piss her off, you... you I'm like... It sucks. Yeah. So she's just she's really good at following directions, and she's always engaged, and she's really sweet to other kids. Yeah. Like she she's never a problem. All right, hold on. But what's the one big thing after you read these two, one and a half, almost two books? Like, what's the one thing you've implemented so far? Um, Self control. So, like, it's it's my job to control my reactions and my behavior when I am attempting to discipline her disobedience. Nice. Yeah. So, like, I can't, just because she's being disobedient doesn't give me the right to be disobedient as I discipline her disobedience. Yeah. So, like, my my biggest thing lately has been controlling my anger. I don't, I like, feeling anger is normal, but I, I don't get to act out on my anger. Like, I... Her obedience is very important to me, but I also am the adult and I have to be obedient to God as I am disciplining It, it is super hard. And, it and, is. And even the way that my face looks, I think it's hard to like, so for us, like yesterday, I think Jet hit Austin with like a full water, like a bucket of water and drilled him and, and Austin's crying on the ground. Oh my gosh. And Jet's like, what? <laughs> and then Adrian's like, I think he broke his leg. And I'm like, you know, and so I've got, th- so I've got Jet looking like nothing happened, which makes you kind of angry at him for not caring that he just, in Austin, 
<laughs> like bloody murder. Adrian goes like, he's dead, you know, like, and so I'm kind of going out there into that. <laughs> and you're having to have like all this control and I kind of brush Jed aside. Daddy, you don't love me. You told me you hate me. And I'm like, I didn't say that I hate. Yeah. What are you talking about? And I go look at Austin and he's, I go, are you hurt or are you injured? You know, it's like one of those things. Yeah. And then he's actually hurt, not injured. He'll be fine. He was limping around for about two hours and then he stopped limping. And then, uh, and then Jet is so wounded by the fact that I would care about Austin and not like, and it's, it's hard, right? Because you gotta, you have to parent both hearts in the moment. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Jet, it's not a big deal. If you would just go over to Austin and go like, are you okay? Then it would probably solve everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, and so, and then I think what's also hard is that they'll hurt each other and then they'll start wrestling. And, and then I'm torn between, do I break them up or show them how to wrestle better? Like, I think that's where I, yeah. you know, like, oh, your technique is terrible. Let, let, let's do this all <laughs> over again. Like, you, you know, so like, you want to help them out. Um, at the same time, you don't want to foster more anger and hatred towards each other. It's just, oh, yeah. It's a, it's a difficult thing because, you know, yeah. like there's always time to practice wrestling. And I think that's just part of growing up. And so you're kind of, you know, the boys and girls are completely different completely worlds. Completely different. Yeah, it, completely it's, different. it's sort of wild. Anyway, yeah, yeah I, I, think, I, I think Adrian's been, we both sort of have benefited from being able to get ourselves to a place of calm. Uh, and I think different children for us take us to levels of emotional anxiety. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I think um, for Adrian, it's our third born that takes her to like off the charts, frustrated. And for me, it's like not a problem, but for our second born, that's one that makes me go crazy. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I feel like it's interesting how that is just- uh, It bring different kids will bring, bring up, up different care, like different- parts of you. Bring out the worst of you yeah. or the best of you. Yeah. You know? In fact, one of the Bible verses um, we've been memorizing is uh, a man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. And mm-hmm. I make them say that and I make myself say that. Because uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's that's, it's super important. And um, Like I have to model the behavior that I want to see. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. toddlers have low impulse control. Like, Impulse control is not is almost non-existent. Right. Yeah. And so if I do not have impulse control as an adult, then how am I going to expect her to have impulse control? Like, how am I going to expect that to grow in her if I'm sitting there like... Oh, like I feel like we, you and I could go for a while on this. In fact, we probably need to make another podcast yeah. on this one thought. Um, hey, listen, let's do that for next time. Okay. Yeah, let's come, we'll go into that parenting podcast because I really feel like there's a lot there that people could glean um, from. And I think that might be one of your strengths now, super parent. Yeah. All right, hey, thanks for listening <laughs> and watching. Would you mind subscribing, liking, sharing, do the things that you do. It's says pass on Pastor Plex podcast. Hey, we'd love to hear from you. We've talked about faith, culture, and everything in between. Thanks for watching, listening, and participating. From our house to yours, have an awesome week of worship.